Last thing I want to talk about in section 2.5 is uh, parallel and perpendicular lines and how their slopes relate to each other. Okay, so uh, parallel lines are kind of the easy one. Um, the idea that two lines are parallel if they never intersect. So parallel. Okay, so parallel lines never intersect. Okay, uh, they'll never cross. Okay. Um, now, because they never intersect, that must mean that they travel sort of at the same rate. Okay, they have the same rate of change, meaning that their slopes are the same. Okay, as one rises, uh, the rate at which one rises is the same rate at which the other one rises. Okay, so the rise over one run ratio is going to be the same. Okay, so they're going to end up having the same slope. Okay, so they never intersect, they have the same slope. Okay, so if the slope on one of the lines is, uh, you know, two-thirds, then the slope on the other line is also two-thirds, okay? Um, now, the other type of line we'll talk about is called uh, perpendicular lines, okay? Perpendicular lines are a little bit different, not quite a bit different. Uh, in the fact that they do intersect. And not only do they intersect, but they intersect at a 90 degree or right angle. Okay, so perpendicular lines uh, they intersect at right angle. Okay, so that's the definition of perpendicular lines. So they do intersect, has to be a right angle or 90 degree angle. Uh, an interesting relationship though here between the slopes. And what ends up happening, and there's uh, a lot of geometry involved in uh, proving this, so I'm not going to go into the details, but what ends up happening is that if you were to draw or sketch in here a right triangle using a vertical and horizontal line and then do the same thing on the other line so you use a vertical and a horizontal what you would find if I drew those accurately enough uh, is that the rise for one is going to be the same as the run for the other. And the run for this other one here, this first one, is the same as the rise for the other. Okay? So the rise on one is the run on the other, and the run on one is the rise on the other. Uh, and so for that reason, if you knew one of the slopes, you could find the other by inverting it. Right? So taking the rise, making it the run, and taking the run and making it the rise. So that inverts the fraction. The other thing to notice is that if you'll always have the case that one of the slopes will increase, the other will decrease. The only exception to that is when you have a vertical and a horizontal line. Those are also perpendicular. As soon as you tilt from vertical and horizontal, you're always going to have one increasing and one decreasing uh, combination. Okay, so. Uh, so, let's see, how do I want to write that? Um, as a result, then, I guess if one is positive, one is negative, because one's increasing, one's decreasing, and the ratios are flipped, that's a combination that we call the uh, negative reciprocal. So one slope is the negative reciprocal of the other, it means you change the sign and flip the fraction. Okay, both things must happen. So the slopes are negative reciprocals. Now some textbooks 
or and some instructors will use opposite reciprocals. Actually, I kind of like that better, uh, but I'm going to go with negative just because I have it written there. It's good enough. Um, okay, so if I had a slope there, let's say one of my slopes was positive three-fifths, then the other slope, the perpendicular slope, would be negative uh, five-thirds. So you change the sign and flip the fraction. Both have to happen. All right, so um, let's take a look at an example where this might be applied to the point slope form. Okay, so okay, so uh, let's say I wanted to find uh, the equation. of the line um, going through, oh, let's give it a point, 2 comma uh, 4.5, I'll even throw a decimal in there, uh, and parallel to y equals uh, negative 2 thirds x plus 7. Okay. So here I've got a couple things going on. I've got, I want to find the equation of a line, I've got a point, and I've got a line that it's running parallel to. Now this is not the line I want to find. This is a given line, it's a second line, and it's running parallel to the line I want to find. And so if they're running parallel, the key is that they must have the same slope. So I identify the slope from this line, the given line. Okay, so the slope here is negative two-thirds. Okay, and so if the given line has a slope of negative two-thirds, then the line I'm looking for has a slope of negative two-thirds. Okay, so I'm going to plug that slope along with the point into the point slope formula and that will give me an opportunity to find the, um, uh, the, the appropriate equation. So the point slope formula again, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. As I plug everything in, I have my, y, my x1, y1, so this will be y minus 4.5. Uh, equals negative two-thirds times x minus two. All right. Uh, going to distribute the fraction. So we get y minus 4.5 equals negative two-thirds x. Double negative makes a plus. Two-thirds times two is four-thirds. Right. Multiply the numerators. Now I just need to add my 4.5 to both sides. Okay, now that's interesting because now I have a fraction and a decimal that I have to add together. Uh, but remember that a decimal and a fraction are really the same thing, just different forms. And so maybe I'll change one into the other. Um, I don't really want to deal with changing a third into a decimal because it won't terminate nicely, so maybe 4.5 I'll change to a whole number. Or, I'm sorry, not a whole number, a uh, fraction. That's four and a half, right? So 4.5, which is four and one half, is the same as nine halves, if I convert that. Four times two plus one, nine halves. Okay, so I'm really adding four thirds and nine halves together. Uh, Four thirds plus nine halves. Well, get a common denominator of six. Uh, I need to multiply the top and bottom of that fraction, the first fraction by two, and of the second fraction by three. Right? I got to get the six on the bottom. And so I'm going to end up with eight over six. Uh, and then, let's see, 9 times 3 is 27, so it's 27 over 6. 
8 and 27 is 35, so that's 35 sixths. Okay, so now when I put that all back together again, uh, I'm trying to find the equation of this line. So I have y by itself now. And maybe I'll try this in another color so it stands up. Final answer would be y equals uh, negative 2 thirds x. And then I've got a plus 35 sixths. Okay. And of course, 35 sixths is a mixed number would be 5 and 5 6, so it's just a hair under 6. Okay, So uh, this is our final answer. It is in slope-intercept form, and so we can readily identify uh, both the slope of negative 2 thirds and the y-intercept of 35 sixths. Um, the last example I'm going to show you, I'll try to run through this one a little bit faster and keep the numbers nicer, uh, is going to be a perpendicular line example, and so let um, me erase some of this that I don't need, and I'm going to change a couple things in here. I'm going to change the point. I'm going to change that it's now going to instead be, instead of parallel, we're going to say perpendicular. point I'm going to use, let's go with something fairly simple, negative 1 comma 2, and let's make it the line uh, x plus 2y equals 5. Now this line is not in slope-intercept form. This is a Remember, uh, this is a second line that the line we're looking for is perpendicular to, okay? So I'm not trying to find this line, it's given. I'm trying to find the line that it's perpendicular to, but that also goes to the point negative one, two. Okay, uh, so to do that, I gotta figure out what the slope of this line is. And because it's perpendicular, I then need to find the negative reciprocal. So the slope of that line can be found by first solving for y. If I get y by itself, then I know the m is the number multiplying the x, right? y equals mx plus b. So to solve for y, let's do that first. Put another color in there. I'm going to take that, solve for y. I'm going to subtract an x from both sides, right? So subtract an x. So I'm going to get 2y equals negative x plus 5. And then I'm going to divide out the 2. When I divide the 2, I divide it to every term because I'm dividing it on both sides and it's going to distribute to both terms on the right. And so I'm going to have y equals uh, negative 1 half x plus 5 halves. Remember, this is not the line we're looking for. This is still the line that's given. It's the perpendicular line. It has a slope of negative one half. So that means the slope that I need for the line perpendicular is going to be the negative reciprocal. So I change the negative to a positive, flip the one half to a two. And so my slope that I'm going to actually use is 2. Okay, so I need a slope m equal to 2, not negative 1 half. Change the sign, flip the fraction, slope is 2. And I take that 2 along with my uh, x1, y1, and I plug those three things in. So my I get y minus 2, that's my y1, equals m is 2 times x minus, well, negative 1, I'll throw a parenthesis there. The double negative will make this a plus, so it's really y minus 2 equals 2 times x plus 1. Distribute the 2, y minus 2 equals 2x plus 2, and of course I'm 
skipping a couple steps here, I'm not writing all the details, but uh, if I were to add two to both sides to free up the y, uh, I'm really going to have 2x plus 4. Okay. And of course, that line is perpendicular to the given line, because again, the slope is 2 rather than negative 1 half, and it goes through the point negative 1, 2, because if I plug in negative 1 for x, I get 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, add 4, I get positive 2, that's the output. So it does go through the point negative 1, comma 2.